What's going on, everybody? I think we're live and rolling. Um, just want to say hello. I'm Josh Douglas. It's my buddy, Seth Fighter. What's up? What's happening? We Thanks are back at us. it. We are definitely back at it again. Uh, seasonal patterns for largemouth and smallmouth bass. We're going to talk about spring to summer transition. I think mostly past the spawn, post spawn, getting yeah. into summer stuff and summer type of stuff that's going to be coming up right about now up yeah. here up north. This thing. Good. Yeah. Beautiful. Cool. Oh. I don't know how to bring it back now at all. Uh, guys, we got some giveaways for this one. We got a Shields gift card for 50 bucks. We got an Omnia fishing gift card for 50 bucks. That's online. And then uh, Rip a Lip. Rip a Lip has stepped up big time. They're the one sponsoring this site. Both Seth and I will jump into a bunch of that, what we got going on with Rip a Lip. Uh, they got a nice prize pack, some electronics covers and stuff like that, and the, and the app, which we'll get into. And then Wu Tungsten, since we're talking largies and smallies. Yeah. They got a large and smallie tungsten pack for everybody. Yeah. We're gonna be sending out. So we'll pick. We're gonna pick. What would that be? Four people at four, maybe five, five with the woo with the woo thing. Five people at random, and we'll get to know. We'll, we'll whatever email, whatever email you used to register for this webinar is the one we will be notifying you on if and when you win. Let's jump right in there, guys. We're gonna start out with a little something from Ripple Lip. Ripple Lip is something both Seth and I both got involved with uh, this year. Yeah. Um, Awesome app. Uh, basically, you customize all your settings, all Seth and I settings. You know, we're privy to some pretty good information uh, over the course of the year on different stuff, different settings we want to play with for different factories, and we give all that right back into the app. Uh, Seth Hummingbird, yeah. get good stuff. I know I actually use that thing to pick some of my settings this year. Look through yeah. there at some. Yeah. We got a lot of different experts and stuff that are involved in it. Uh, but the app as a whole is just is an awesome thing. A lot of electronics. I used to do a whole bunch of electronics training, um, and now with just a busy tournament schedule and stuff like that, we can't do it. But what's awesome is just how everything's evolved now. And then a ten dollar app, you have access to all the same stuff that we're looking at and all the different tricks that we're using for our app. So yeah. I'll just jump through some of this stuff. We'll keep it kind of quick. You know, this is some of the stuff you can do by customizing. I know Seth and I both have our rigs customized. Yeah. Uh, for us, you know, we're, I'm rocking the Altrex, the HDS Live, the Point One. Uh, here's just some of the stuff that you can you can expect to see from the app. Uh, there's different videos, installations, but this stuff's some of my favorite. My default settings, um, I, can, I can put all that in there. If anything happens, I get a new graph. I know all the different type of settings that we want to use. And again, again, we're tied in uh, Seth and I on the fishing side, but then there's some serious hummingbird and Lawrence experts involved. Uh, the same yeah. people that we're talking to to get our stuff. Yeah, it's awesome if you get a new boat or new graphs and just for getting everything set up, you can run through there and it'll give you really good starting places. And also, like this slide here, um, some places you go to, you want stuff set up different. You know, if you're going to a grass lake or, um, you know, deep water smallmouth lake or even like rivers, just because of all the current, you get a lot of interference and stuff. So we got different setups for, uh, you know, all the types of body of waters you're fishing. Yeah, you go like Lake Erie, Buffalo, you might want totally different settings because you're looking at the fish and stuff like that. So a lot of awesome information on this stuff. Uh, again, we're going to encourage everybody to sign up. It's a $10 app. I don't think you can go wrong with this app at all for $10 um, and get, get right into it and get all the, the good stuff from us. Let's get into this deal, huh? We're going to talk about smallmouth fishing. And since we're talking spring post spawn fish are coming off the beds they've all yep. been up shallow you know some of those fish are going to stay shallow and some of those fish are going to get deep so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to start where they were spawning i'm going to start pulling out and going backwards so if you look at a big reef like this big large shallow flat uh bigger the better all the foods there and remember things are smaller this time of year your crawdads are a little smaller your perch are a little smaller but there's an abundance of small bait running around because everything in the factory, everything out in the lake has just spawned. So large, shallow flats. Um, I love to fish them. They can have cabbage on them. Definitely want to yeah. have some rock there. Oh, yeah. This, you know, it's a place that they'd spawn on the high spots on there. And, you know, they're going to spend a good amount of time in that, you know, pre-spawn, spawn, post-spawn on, on that same area. Yep. Figure that you're going to spawn up here on these little high spots on a reef like this. Well, they're going to use these guts right here. To come in they're going to use this vertical stuff where they can get to that deep water quick and eventually they're going to slide up here 
Well, they're going to hang out there, and at the same time, uh, other fish are going to start showing up. Perch is going to be in abundance. So some of those fish will actually stay up on the flat. The other ones will start using these same ways, and the same ways they came in, that they'll use those to come back out. And I, for one, I, I like to chase them out as soon as I can. But when, when you're sitting up on these shallow flats, you got to think of the bait that's going to be up there. We're talking after the post spawn with smallies. We've got mayflies. Fly hatches are a big deal. Yeah. My man's fight or fly. I don't think there's anything I that I like to throw better uh, than a hair jig if you're if you're going around a mayfly hatch. Those big fish, they know they can look up. Mm -hmm. um, other other things, a tube. Th you know, 365 days a year, you can throw a tube at a smallmouth. Spinner baits. Again, the perch stuff. You know, the the SB uh, from Evergreen, awesome topwater bait. The Arashi popper, half ounce bait, real awesome. A spy bait, something I've been getting into that mm -hmm. time of year. Again, a lot of perchy type stuff. There's that cabbage up there, uh, a lot of bluegills and stuff like that. Your green pumpkin stuff, big spinner bait, uh, definitely. Scanning the flats is a big deal to me. You know, you start getting out on these big rock reefs, and I see so many times people find rock and they just stop and they start fishing it. That's a needle in a haystack type of fishing. Um, Look to know what's out there. Not all rocks created equal. You can see on this flat right here on this image, you can come off a high spot. This is probably where they were up spawning along these edges. And then they pull out and they get some of this bigger, better rock. And that's where they're going to want to be. That's where their crawdads are. That's where the, you know, they'll be there for a good while. Yeah. That's, you know, a similar place you'd catch them in the pre spawn. But anytime you get on them flats, those rock flats, and you can see they're on the side scan, you get that real hard, you know, two, three, five, an area that's relatively flat those can be really really good spots definitely lights out spots it's good they want to they use those coming in use those going out and heck they'll spawn right along those edges too depending on the depth that you're looking at uh, again locating the school idle around they can't hide from you that that well so if you start seeing you start seeing some marks you got to assume that you're looking at smallmouth right there and and this one i can see at least four maybe five of them on, on the sonar just idling through um you know, you want to turn around and start fishing. My rule of thumb is always if you, you see a bunch, there's a lot more of them yeah. around, you know. Especially when they're at that depth. If you only see a couple of fish, there's probably quite a few in the area. No doubt. Uh, again, we talked about those transitions, the rock and sand. Transitions are just always so important. We see it in deer hunting. We yeah. see it in fishing. Transitions are just uber important, whether it's rock, sand transitions like this. You're coming in sand up onto the reef and rock. They're going to use that to move. Or whether you're talking rock and gra grass transitions, and again, these are where you're throwing that that uh, evergreen shower blow up on top of the water, or throwing that jerk bait around the edge, maybe a tube or a dog cast spinner, spinner bait. Spinner works really spinner bait. Get around yeah, grass or small you got ones. all the bait. You got all that bait fish around here. You got some rock out here, some cabbage. Those smallies like to use those edges and use their eyes. They're they're definitely going to get on that bait fish big time. Uh, let's talk about the deep water stuff. This is when I really get excited. That's my favorite time of year. I love right now when they're all up shallow and all that kind of good stuff, but um, it is definitely deep water fishing. You turn the electronics on, you go around, you actually look for them. Uh, these are some of your more common deep water smallie baits. A lot, a lot of times I'm working with a drop shot in my hand. I, I don't know if, if under here I even, yep, I got the Ned Rig up top. Ned Rig's going to be a good one. Uh, two um you much of a cranker on those smallies out deep no but it, it can it work plays. but it i mean plays. you could take a drop shot on that rig and do go everything to you need to do out deep go to town tube, again tube. throw that tube in there maybe yeah. maybe a jig you could have thrown in a jig a football jig i guess we didn't think about that one that, that that'll play some too um but again you're just getting out there and here's kind of this is a good one this is just lake champlain and um you know, you got a big spawning flat up here. So you assume that's where the fish come from. That's where they're spawning and they're going to move out. And smallies are a little different, right? Because they can spawn here and here and here. But you assume it's a big flat and they can come off. And this is going to be some of their first stops. You know, there's an intermediate rock pile, stuff like that. They, they yeah. seem to never want to keep a crawdad too far away from them. Yeah, shoreline base too. Yeah, moving yeah. out. They're going to kind of move down this ledge until they get out here on this point right and that's kind of going to be right after the spawn some fish if there's grass will hold there and stay there for the summer yeah. other ones will start venturing out here under these big main lake points out there in some of that deeper water and those are the ones we're kind of looking for and i can't ex express enough turn your graph on oh, yeah. look for them they can't hide from you that well when they're out there that deep so yeah. my side scans on i'm looking for the same stuff i look for up shallow i'm looking for out deep but i'm also looking for the fish and you can see here you know one of these i'm probably 
looks like 3.4. I'm probably idling on these ones right here, and these I'm over the top of them with my graph, and you can see them spaghetti and all over the bottom. Uh, but those are classic drop shot fish, 23, 23 feet, yeah. drop a drop shot, a Ned rig, something down on those bass. And smallies are generally gamers, but they'll be really to play if you can find them like that for sure. Let's get into largies. Yeah. We'll definitely cover a bunch of questions. Please, again, everyone, use the questions factor in this deal. We'll, we'll answer as many, many of them as we can towards the end. Uh, but let's dive right into largies. Yeah, and it, if you notice in this picture, this is pretty much all bluegill based. Um, that's a real big forage for them post spawn. You know, in the spring, it's a lot of crawfish, and then if you're down south, um, obviously later in the spawn, you start getting shad spawn and stuff like that. But as far as the north country goes, um, they're bluegill eaters all summer long. So everything I'm throwing is going to be you know, fairly bluegill related. A lot of green pumpkins, a lot of little chartreuse accents, stuff like that. But uh, run through these. Um, a stick worm's a really, really good bait all the time. And we're gonna rig that a bunch of different ways. Nico rigging, wacky rigging, I'm throwing on a drop shot. Texas um, rig. That little jig worm in the middle with the chartreuse jig heads, super, super killer. How much money you want on that bait in your life? Uh, a lot on Tonka, a lot, of, a lot on the lakes around there and then, um, that's kind of more your outside edge stuff. We'll get into that. And then um, the heavy grass stuff, depending on the depth, you're either going to be flipping it or frogging it. That's where that Tokyo rig and the jig come into play, frog if it's shallow. And then uh, a crankbait works really, really good when they get out on those uh, deeper, clean rocks and stuff. Really, really good time of year to start crankbait fishing. Talk to me real quick about the Tokyo rig. I get a lot of emails, texts, and people want to know more information, when, where, what they're fishing. I know that's yeah. a staple for you, the BMC Tokyo. Yeah, it's 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 a super versatile rig. Um, a lot of things you can do with it, but I love flipping it in, in grass. Um, you know, last year we did a lot of damage on that up around the house, and uh, it's just a little different look. It's it's kind of a compact, flippable drop shot, but... Uh, you know, keeps the bait up off the bottom and those grass, you know, a lot of times you're fishing silty bottom and stuff like that and you're throwing heavy Texas rigs. I feel like they kind of dig down in the bottom a little bit and um, it, it just gives the fish a different look and we've been real successful on it, so. Definitely. Uh, one thing too, and I think you told me the quote years ago, I use it all the time in seminars and stuff. Uh, difference between large and small since we're talking about it, smallies use their eyes so dang much. Mm -hmm. uh, they're a wolf pack. They, they chase things down and use their eyes. That's why zebra mussels play well for them uh largies can't see that well they use that lateral line a lot they're an ambush predator so they want to hide deeper in the weeds deeper under docks yeah. or in lay downs where a large mouth i think you know, this is the quote you had told me before and it was an awesome one but smallies will eat 100 minnows a day beat up a bunch of crawdads all day because that's their style a large mouth looking for a handful of bluegills yeah and, and yeah. that's Big what they're gonna bigger yep. baits for yep. sure. um and in the spring you know we're going to talk about where they're going, but you know, this is where they've been, um, you know, inside grass line, spawning bays, stuff like that. This is where the fish were, you know, pretty much everywhere in the country right now, the fish have spawned or are in the process of it. So we're going to talk more about where they're going, but, uh, you know, this is where they've been. Um, and again, you know, those largest do stay deal. shallow. Some oh, of them yeah, stay yeah. shallow and, and yeah. use those same ways out. So yeah, they're some really, of that works. Just maybe yeah. your presentation starts to change a little bit yeah, on their way back out. Yeah, get more vertical stuff and less less horizontal stuff. But uh, summer in uh, up north, um, it, it's really all about the grass. The, the the rocks are definitely a big factor, but rocks without grass aren't that good. Whereas you can catch them in grass without rocks. So. Um, the two places I'm really going to look as far as cover goes the most are going to be a uh, deep outside weed lines where the last little bit of grass ends before it gets to the basin. And if you can find somewhere where rocks line up on the edge of that outside edge of grass, that that's what you're looking for. That's the, that's the sweet spot. And the other option is getting in the thickest grass possible. And that's where the, you know, the flip and the jig and the Tokyo rig really come in. Um, and that's going to be the deepest, tallest grass you can find. That's, you know, a lot of places that's going to be somewhere between 6 and 14 feet, depending on what lake you're on. But uh, if you have milfoil, they love getting right in the middle of that thick stuff. So Deepest, tallest, thickest, too, generally? Yeah, that thicker, yeah. That thicker area that they can get Yeah, in I, I definitely don't grass. want to be able to see the bottom, you know what I mean? I want it pretty choked out. 
But uh, you can see here, this is a, a little section of a lake. Um, you know, you got areas like this, this little canal up in here, and then you got a big shallow bay up in here. That's where a lot of your large mouse are going to spawn. And then uh, as, uh, as soon as they're done spawning, obviously some fish are going to stay shallow. Docks are a good option. And you can kind of just run dock rows out as they go, you know, right after they spawn. They're typically going to be on the, you know, docks closest to the spawning area and just make their way out towards the main lake. And there's a lot of lakes up north where docks are the deal all year, where, you know, it'll go from those back bay docks to the, um main lake docks as the summer progresses but a lot of our fish we got so much grass and rock they're going to slide out here and start getting on these little bumps and stuff like that and kind of work their way into places they'd go in the summer you know let's say they spawned up in this little deal they're going to slide out here maybe be on docks for a few days or a week then maybe get out in some thicker mill foil and eventually work their way around to you know you see something like this you know there's going to be some hard bottom on it a little rock pile or something Oops, switch it up but um that's eventually where they're going to go is out to these you know main lake points and any, anywhere the grass is really really pretty along the way they're going to stop so yeah and you can always basically rest assured those large mouth as soon as they come off the spawn they're going to return the favor on the annoying bluegill because yeah. the bluegill are going to spawn so some of those fish are going to stay shallow eat the bluegill and then yeah. as everything starts to move out to deeper water and the summer starts to heat up all the whole food chain is going to actually move out as a general rule of thumb and uh bear spots are really big you'll find those in the grass flats they're kind of hard to find but they can be really good typically it's a, a finesse presentation on those throwing that jig worm or a drop shot in the holes but uh like to sit in the grass and you know if you can get a little rock spot or a little sand spot in the grass they'll kind of guard that um they'll kind of guard that and uh you know hide in the grass and keep their eyes peeled on those little holes and you can you can really do some damage with some uh finesse stuff in there but uh one really good place to look for sure definitely and now now for your fish like josh said before all your not all your fish are going deep i feel like you know the biggest majority of big fish do go deep but there's still plenty of big ones shallow and uh especially closer right after they spawn it's kind of the same down south of so the shad spawn um uh the bluegills typically start spawning right after the bass do so those fish that do stay shallow those ones that are you know still up there just got done garden fry or they're hanging out on boat docks or something like that they'll get all over those bluegill beds and um nice part is most of them are shallow you can see them and then a lot of them are out deeper but they they pop really good on a side scan or you know, this is a 360 image but um something you can see really really good just sidling around and it is um, incredible one of the first things you really notice when you get out there and look the honeycombs yeah. that you can see on that kind of stuff. And, and bluegills will spawn all summer this isn't a one-time deal this will this will play throughout the year i mean typically as soon as the water gets around 70 you're gonna have your first bluegill spawn and then every full moon throughout the summer after that so you know you got, you're gonna have one in june july august and maybe even to September, depending on where you're at. But, and they can be up 20 feet. Yeah. And you can see them yeah. out on the edge of the weed line way out there. And I, I just thought at Chickamauga, they were just starting to get off the spawn the bass and go in the back of a pocket. And you can see all these all these bluegills sitting up on their bed, the honeycomb. And there's like one six pound bass and he's just sitting there five feet away. And I'm sure he's just waiting for one of those, one of them to slip up. He's just literally sitting there watching it. So uh it's a good way to catch big bass too that time of year that, yeah, that eats gonna, big bluegill it's not gonna be big schools though it's gonna no, be it's one, one or two, two fish, yep. fish off a of bluegill yep. bed but they, they can be the right and ones. if they're not right there on the bed they're gonna be somewhere close to it whether yeah. it's a lay down or off in the in the in the usually shade a little yeah, bit usually right in there. the best cover right on the edge of the bluegill bed whether yep. it's a dock, dock or a yep. lay down or some thicker grass whatever it may be boat docks this is you know Pretty. A lot of lakes that don't have the really good grass, boat docks are kind of the deal. Or dirty water, which yeah, probably doesn't have it, good grass, it's, too. It's off color, for sure. Um, and then you kind of just follow those out just like you would the grass fish, you know what I mean? Start back in the bays they spawn in, right when they get done spawning. And as the summer progresses, just kind of start fishing more main lake docks. But quick, easy, skip a stealth fighter over there and crack them. Money. Yeah. Money. This, probably, yeah. that's this is the juice. Right this is, this, I mean, this is what you're looking for, in my opinion, is especially as you're getting closer to that summertime. Well, you know, you're a couple of weeks after all the fish have spawned and you know everything's moving out. Um, 
you, so you got a little point of grass here that's got rocks on two sides of it. Um, this is this is what you're looking for that's in it. the summer for large mouse or you know anytime they're done spawning. Um, this isn't a flipping deal. This is submerged grass. This is the outside edge, the deepest bit of it. You know, it's going to be a lot of finesse. A football jig plays well here too, but Carol um, Carolina rig. Yeah, that as well. And you can crank some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. This is where a DT16 comes in, uh, DT10, depending on the depth and then the finesse stuff that the jig worm, drop, drop, yeah. drop shot, Nico, all that stuff. Um, this is really, you know, as far as post spawn summertime goes this is where your majority of your biggest fish in your lake are going if you have stuff like this in here but, and this holds up until the fall comes yeah, and it starts to kill it, the grass off yeah, and this will be good out. all the way yeah. into well, for sure all the way through august if not into september depending on what the weather's doing before the fish start to head back shallow but um this can be really big schools and you know spots like this you could you could win a tournament off something like this, just one spot, but it's nice to have quite a few of them. But um, in this shot, this shot literally has this screenshot's a great one because it, it has everything on it. Like you can just catch them along weed lines this yeah. time of year or on a point, a rock pile, grass. And if I'm not mistaken, these even look like some fish yeah. sitting out off the end of that point. And it ain't nothing to idle over those and see. A bluegill, fat, I mean, hundreds of them yeah. sitting off the end. So the food source is there. The the crawdads are through there. I mean, everything that they need yeah. is is right there. Your more dominant fish are going to be right out in right out in that range and down these edges right here, for sure. I mean, yeah. it's got everything that they need. They don't have to leave that. And that's it. I think we're ready for questions already. Again, I want to thank you guys all for coming out. You can check out all of our previous uh, webinars at joshdouglasfishing.com. Seth and I do got some big things in the works to keep these webinars coming and uh, a nice big uh, platform for us to keep them coming on a regular basis. So please tune in. We definitely appreciate it and we hear you all. We, uh, we love doing these webinars. As, as long as you all keep tuning in, we're going to sit here and keep doing them for you. So should we get some questions? Yeah. Ripple, thank you again for coming on. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to not get my questionnaire to come up. Hold on one second. Sorry, guys. Okay, I think we got some here. How would you fish a high percentage dock you can skip under because it's too low of water that you can't? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, well, his question was, how do you fish docks on the water's too high? And this year, I mean, every place is flooded right now. Um, you definitely got to take a different approach normally when it comes to boat docks. I'm kind of a, you know, stick worm, flip a jig under kind of guy. But when you have water that you can't, where you physically can't get under a dock, um, then I go to horizontal baits. If it's if it's fairly clear, you know, it might be a swim jig. If you got some color, it might be a chatter bait or even, even a square bill. But you're definitely going to have to change your approach a little bit if you can't put it right on them. Definitely. Uh, how do you find the bigger smallies during the post-spawn period? That's the, that's the toughest time to do it. They're still definitely there because they're hungry. Those females didn't eat a whole heck of a lot. Once, What I've noticed is the, the females, like, you know, the males are going to take to the reef or the shallow spot first. The females will be close, but they'll be out a little deeper. Then all of a sudden, they'll get up there shallow, and they're super spooky. They're, they don't commit to a bed. Then they commit to a bed. Then they come out. Now they need to eat. You know, they really haven't eaten much. Um, I'm still trying to figure out if they spawn multiple or lay eggs multiple times on different beds. I, I don't know. I think that they kind of do a little bit. They tend to hang a little shallow, uh, but then they start to go out. So in my opinion, I, I like to get out as soon as possible and start looking for them yeah. out deep. I think the bigger fish tend to spawn first and they get right back to that high real estate stuff that they like and they live on. So again, I think it's just more so getting away from the easy numbers that you're going to find up shallow and instead get yourself back out there yeah. and deep. I can tell you as much as fun as it is to sit out and catch bed and fish and stuff like kind of Malax and stuff right now. Uh, when Seth and I are out there fun fishing this time of year, we're probably not even doing it. We're actually back out already looking for where those ones are coming when they come back out. And uh, I think that's how you go about doing it. Yeah. You know, just fish for them. But the baits, all that's going to be the same. You just got to get away from the numbers and instead yeah. look for the quality. 
Seth, St. Albans Bay is rocking. Finish third out of 50 boats right now within feet of where you were. Right That's on. Good enough. Rock on. That's good enough. That spot was terrible last year. <laughs> Seth, what does that say? Uh, he's talking about the Danny's. Fishing Tonka on Sunday, what would you use? Um... What I'll are they doing? The fish kind of I'd start looking for some flipping fish. Oh, that's what I would do right away. Yeah, I'd start looking for some flipping fish, and there might be some fish already out on them. Uh, might be a know, little summer spots. Might be a little early out there, but still, again, getting out there. And yeah, the, the first, first ones, ones to get out. It's there. like ledges down yeah. south. The first ones to get out there are good ones, and they eat. Yeah, the first one every summer I catch up rock piles a four or five pounder. It's just. Yep, no doubt. That's, the down that's one where the gets big ones out there because yeah. nobody else is doing it. So I, I start looking deep. That's a good question. Lakes without much depth change or structure. Um, what do you look for in the weeds? Um, that's when it's going to come down to just the actual best quality of grass, regardless of, uh, you know, obviously some lakes don't have rock piles and stuff like that. And I'm there, I'm just going to look for the thickest, tallest, luscious looking grass you can find, you know, the greenest green, thickest, fluffiest stuff. And, uh, they're and if, just, it, ain't, and if it ain't there, then the it's best. then it's shallow stuff. Then it'd have to be yeah, right. Then you'd have it to circle get docks, yeah. wood, stuff like that. Maybe that's the dominant thing that they go to. If the grass and the rock just if it's just all sand and mud, then I'd start looking a little shallower. Keep up the good work, thanks, man. We appreciate that. What would be the must-have baits for post-spawn largemouth? I'm gonna say a wacky senko. Yeah, I'd just say a big, big bag of stick worms. You yeah. can do so much with them, and like northern strain largemouths just love a stick worm. Whether you're Nico, drop shot, wacky, uh, jig worm, Ned rig, whatever you frog. want to call it. Frog will cough up some big fish that yeah. are that are moving back out. The, the water temperature starting to warm up a little bit. They're eating some bluegills. The frogs yeah. are moving around. The uh, frog would probably be a pretty dang good one too. Yeah, maybe cast pro swim jig. Yeah, they start to get on a jig pretty good again after they spawn. You know, Definitely. typically when it's around the spawn, I like to prefer to fish Texas rigs, but they'll start getting on a jig again pretty good. Is most of this stuff the same when it comes to the rivers? Uh, not, really. not really. Um, I That's mean, there's definitely, on its there's own. definitely like they're definitely gonna move. I I would say the biggest difference would be the current. current. Um, when they're spawning, they want pretty slack water, and then when they're done spawning, they're gonna they're gonna get in some form of current. It might not be that heavy, but some form of current, and they're gonna they are gonna back out of where they spawned. Um, it's that just, goes it's for just the largest and the smallest. Yeah. They're gonna be the same. They're gonna want you know a little bit of current. Those river fish are used to it, but for the yeah. most part, they're gonna get back. And with the river, I mean, it's all pretty much five for less, with yeah. the exception of late fall. I mean, they just they just live shallow there. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for the webinar, Brent. We appreciate it, man. Any tips for windy days on grass lakes? That's a good question. Actually, yeah. That can really screw up a lot of that, people. I, I'd there. focus more on that outside edge if it's going to be windy um, or boat docks. Um, if you're flipping grass, the wind doesn't really go bode well for it. No. So I, That's I'd when they'll sit up top, edge, too. You can catch so, yeah, wiggle wart, stuff, stuff like lining, that. Wiggle wart. Drink insert, baits, yep. chatter baits, stuff like that. So they're sitting up, they're not so thick, but yeah. it is tough. It is tough when the wind gets going. Um, but again, the wind gets going. Sometimes I like to get out on those rock piles yeah, and stuff exactly. like that too. Out, throw that football edge, jig and the, stuff like that. Yeah. And it should be pretty active out there. Yeah. If the prominent grass on the lake isn't foiled, do you? Yeah. Yeah, I would may, probably make it better. If, yeah, honestly. The question was if the prominent grass isn't mill foil, would you still target it? Yeah. I mean, largemouths love grass, whether it's eelgrass, pads. Um, there's a lot of curly weed blooming right now. Um, they, they just like getting in grass. Millfoil is just the best of the best. Eelgrass, I mean, they'll use whatever they can get, whatever they got going. If, if I mean, grass is grass, and do a largemouth, that's cover. Yeah. So, Millfoil is the best if you yeah. can find it, but yeah. if there's none there, I mean, they're, they're still going to be in some. And down there. south, hydrilla. You know, yeah, it's going to be hydrilla. hydrilla. Get, get up in the hydrilla.
How do you see the transitions on tidal waters as compared? That's a tough question. Asking the wrong guy. You're asking the wrong two dudes, actually. I average we're, 95th place yeah. on tidal rivers. So. Tidal rivers, yeah. whenever I show up, I'm so up and down on those places. Uh, sometimes I'm great, sometimes I'm terrible because I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just fishing where I caught fish and hoping that at some point they're going to bite there. But, yeah, tidal river, a whole new thing. I will tell you. You know, my common knowledge on the title is if it if it's high, they pull up shallower. As it drops down, obviously they have to get out of that water and more towards the edge. So, but definitely not the definitely not the right one to ask. Uh, saw the new Navionics features. How is the new sonar chart shading going to help me catch more fish? I think it's just a thing for the eyes mostly to look at. For me, I like to see the creek channels and stuff. It just Sometimes it's an easy way to look at a map from a distance and see where the creeks run and how they run. Um, from there, once I'm actually breaking it down, it just gives me starting spots, it gives me something where, where to go. Um, you know, for some reason, I can always see the main channel with my mapping, but the second, third channel, stuff like that, seeing where they're coming in and how they're, how they're turning, it's just more easy on the eyes and definitely helps people uh, uh, you know, get on more fish, helps me get on more fish. But once once I'm actually digging in, then I'm zoomed in. I'm using those sonar charts, the one foot contours. That that's the nuts and bolts. That's definitely what we're using to to find the fish. How do you go about fishing a lake in the north that doesn't get any deeper than ten feet? I mean, not not much different. I mean, if you're in a lake that's only ten feet, your weed line's probably gonna be pretty shallow. You fish it just like you would a deep lake, or that, or the bank's pretty. Hard good you know those yes yeah. you'll catch fish on boat docks year round and um shallow grass i mean and there's just some years like on boat and shallow water the grass mm -hmm. maybe just doesn't do what it does in years past and they stay a little bit shallower yeah. or well, there's always bass shallow yep. no matter what yep and plenty of anglers that make a lot of money targeting them shallow period but it, again 10 feet to me is, is damn near shallow so the grass line it, it's, yeah. it's the same things you just get a whole lot of water you don't have to go look at yeah uh, what do you guys favor for bait on Carolina rig and weight? I like stick worm. Yeah, I like the exo stick a lot. Yeah. I throw the biospawn exo stick a lot. I use I work it slower now than like I would a brush hog or something that has more of a appendage. But that I really like it because I don't think a largemouth can stand a weightless piece of plastic that sits there long enough. I think it is what trips their trigger. And the longer I can just sit there and work that bait real slow, it comes through everything. Oh, yeah. you can throw I go thick grass. And I usually fish three quarter. Yeah. Most of the time. But, uh, but then if you want to cross style like a vile crow or something in that brush hog, something of that nature, it'd be some of your more popular baits. But I'm a stick bait guy myself. And it works everywhere. The stick bait will catch them everywhere. Biggest tip for smallmouth in the summer? Um, it's kind of a vague question, man. Um, find the best biggest baddest yeah, small bit, bit structure. yeah that's it and don't don't yeah don't give small mouth too much credit if you're not seeing them if they ain't biting leave because they're, they're biters so you you'll get one of them to bite the more that are in a school uh the better opportunities and that is one thing i guess i guess for summer that that would be my thing find the biggest schools find you know why fish for a few when you can fish for a hundred of them you know that's that's how i would do it because they definitely school up in big big numbers how long does the spawn actually last Fed made, mate there, female moves up. I think. Uh, I think it's a lot different between largemouth and smallmouth. I, think it's I feel like between a, each fish. So. Yeah, I'd say largemouth typically about a week. Um, and then smallmouth, I don't know. I've seen this male smallmouth on a bed for almost a month. So. I think they almost get protective of just that. They're just yeah. So protective smallmouth will definitely area. be up there a lot longer. But I mean, it's fact is the actual spawn and then eggs hatch and all that i think it's fairly similar i just think the male small mouse on the bed longer before it mates you know if the female multi she spawns multiple times i don't think so i don't know I, don't I have no idea what are some tips you would give to fishing minnetonka when you've never fished it before this is for two high school kids going to their first tourney minnetonka is a big body of water tourney next weekend well, I'll tell you this, I'm sure we got some advice for you, but Seth and I both have put in so many hours on that lake and can understand exactly. I mean, it, it is, I've got my butt kicked on that lake plenty of times for ever found success. Um, it's a fun lake. All the lakes fish a little bit differently. Okay? Yeah. Like you I'd got say different just water fish your clarity. strength. Yeah. 
you because you can do it there. Yeah. If you want a fact, drop shot in 25, you can. If you want to throw a frog in a foot of water all day, you can. Just do whatever you want to do. Yeah, you can learn structure fishing. You can learn clipping. You can learn shallow all on that lake. I mean, it's the lake that we cut our teeth on for sure before we ever looked at anything national. So, uh, and, and honestly, I revert back to that lake a lot. It's the, it's the way I look for fish now. What's the best structure to look for big smallmouth in the St. Lawrence? Well, I've never been there. Uh, I think it's more current. It's a river system, so it's it's more current related. It's going to be sand and rock, but uh, it's more like current seams and stuff like that. I hate humps that I've never been there. Humps and stuff like that. So it, it, being a river, it's more about current than structure. I hate that I've never been there. How far away is it from like? That's all. What about from when I'm at Champlain? Oh, not that far. Not that far. Uh, on my home lake the water level changes quite a bit now the water is up and there's a lot of tall hay grass that is tough to get bait through what bait would you recommend to what bait would you oh wait well i think he's asking what bait we would recommend to fish in the tall hay grass i throw a frog like actual hay grass like i think that hay grass that gets up on the banks in texas and stuff that gets flooded out yeah, I throw a frog or, or swim jig or something or punch it. Yep, yeah. they'll get in it though. I know that yeah. they'll definitely get there. Some of those lakes, if the water ever gets up into the bushes yeah. or up into that Water's stuff, they go. go. That's where they go. Fish up there for sure. Uh, how do you guys get the best view on your electronics? I'm using Ripple It, but still have trouble getting a clear picture using down and side scan. Man, that's such a tough question. It's something I we don't have. Know. Is he uh, yeah, Humber, hummingbird, Lawrence. Uh, I don't know what model you got. Nothing. I mean, where the where the transducer is located. There's so much of that type of stuff that without somebody looking at it, um, if you're not getting a picture, you know, you, you if you looked at all the settings, you're not getting a picture. I, I, I literally answer these questions daily because I know how frustrating they can be. Uh, but get it into somebody if 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 it could be a bad faulty transducer. Uh, could be a, something simple as an update and you're, you're back to rolling, you know, they're pumping out so much stuff so fast that you got to really stay on top of those updates. But uh, the technical stuff, we, we were going to find and fish with them, but as far as fixing them and stuff, we got people that help us with that. So uh, I wish I was better at it than I was, that's for sure. Uh, when you put down the hair jig, does water temperature dictate this? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, Pre-spawn, it's killer um post spawn it's killer then about somewhere in july early july it mm -hmm. kind of fades off but i feel like the spy bait just kind it's of does the same the thing it's just there's a point in time like early to mid july or maybe even earlier um where the hair jig kind of isn't really the deal anymore and the, the spy bait kind of takes its place but you fish them real similar and the hair jig's tough to fish out really deep i mean i'm still pretty confident with it in that 12 to 15 range but when i start getting over that um and i love throwing it it's, it's it gets a little bit more difficult spy bait's definitely better and and i think when the bugs stop hatching then yeah. they're not looking for that food source you know that when they're used to looking for the bugs that the big girls are looking up, you don't really catch that many small ones on it. It's like the small ones are so crawdad orientated. The big ones know they're smarter. They know that, that they can look up. And so I would say once those bugs stop hatching, and then if the water, again, if the water starts to darken up and stuff too, that, that starts yeah. to make for a little bit tougher. Yeah, hair jig. But, but from ice out until 4th of July or better, yeah. I'd be throwing a hair jig for yeah. sure. Will the females will the females who are moving out deeper stay in the lower part of the water column or do they suspend up higher? Uh, I, I know largemouth do a lot of suspending when they go back they out. I don't do know when they come in, but that's more for like sonic yeah. purposes. I don't know. I typically catch them on the bottom. So I'm a, yeah, I'm almost always looking. Yeah, definitely. I'm gonna say bottom, but I, I've heard that fish on ledges and stuff go and they suspend a little bit or whatever. I but uh, I don't want to know because I'm not fishing for that fish that often. What is the best technique to use when hitting the points? Like oh. the outside points, a, a drop, just to get bit a drop shot. Carolina uh, rig. Yeah, Carolina rig or football jig is nice for kind of feeling around for where the rocks are, and you typically get bigger bites on them, but. And crankbait? Um, yeah, or crankbait. DT10, DT16. But if you're just trying to see if there's a fish there or not, like drop shot, you'll get bit for sure. Yeah. And idle, idle around the point. Get to know what, what's the good stuff on the point, where the bait's at, all that kind of good stuff. Let's see. 
We got some more. Should we take one more? Yeah. Let's take one more. And any more questions, feel free to always hit us up. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Seth Fighter Fishing, Josh Douglas Fishing. Uh, we'll, we'll get to those questions as soon as we can. We appreciate them coming. What did I get? Have we seen these ones? Yeah. Okay. What about when they spray the lakes after the spawn? What do you look for if they're killing the weeds? Uh, places they didn't kill the weeds. Exactly. Definitely they're places. humans. They make mistakes. They don't spray everything. Um, if they spray really bad, sometimes like the like offshore high spots, humps and stuff that they don't really get to that's not around the docks. Or if you just, you know, if you got to stretch a bank that's no docks on it, they usually don't spray that. So. Oh, it's man. usually a homeowner based thing to try to yeah. keep that cleaned out for the homeowner. You see them alarm like signs, that. you definitely don't want to be there. So you yeah. try to go find find weeds and stuff like that in areas that just that the that the jet skiers and all that stuff aren't going through that don't bother people and it's tend to be at least the last last ever hit. But we deal with it daily, yeah. every day, every lake we go to, we have to deal with uh, either the lawnmower or the weed whacker or the or the uh what's your diff what's your plan, the weed whacker actually? How does that play for you? Still fishing Cutting them? Yeah. Uh, you don't catch them. Don't Opens think. them up a little bit. Let's I'll sun in and all that. I don't know. How far down did they get on that thing? Five feet. Five feet? Yeah. That's what's All right, man. Yeah. I think that's it, guys. We appreciate everything. Again, we'll keep yeah. these coming. Uh, Thanks we'll get on our game. We're at Seth's new house, and this is badass. We got a new place to do this at. So we appreciate y'all coming in. See ya. See ya.